In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous soul. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>
Blessed Abbot Benedict with the spirit of your son and made him a master in the way of perfection. As we celebrate his entrance into glory, may we attain that love which surpasses all understanding. O oh Lord, you have inspired this brother with resolve to follow Christ most closely. Grant him, we pray, 
a blessed end to the journey they not, he now begins, so that they may be, he may be found worthy to offer you a perfect gift of loving service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands, turning your ear to wisdom, inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call for intelligence and to understanding raise your voice, if you seek her like silver and like hidden treasures search her out, then will you understand the fear of the Lord. The knowledge of God you will find, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He has success in store for the upright, is the shield of those who walk honestly, guarding the paths of justice, protecting the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just, what is fair, every good path. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. 
Finally, draw your strength from the Lord and from his mighty power. Put on the armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the tactics of the devil. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with the principalities, with the powers, with the world rulers of this present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. Therefore, put on the armor of God, that you may be able to resist on the evil day and having done everything to hold your ground. With all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the Spirit. To that end, be watchful with all perseverance and supplication for all the holy ones. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let our prayers run to Jesus, Lord of heavens, love Jesus, for the Heraclito. Caristator Piem and for the Son had in our death, Quit with for his whom per calem mori and deeds, Glory and praise. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter said to Jesus in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, will yourselves sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for the sake of my name will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear son, what do you ask of God and of his holy church? I ask for the mercy of God and for the grace to serve him faithfully in this community. After the deliber deliber deliberations of the monastic community, I accept Brother Andrew as a candidate for temporary profession. We also accept him. Thanks be to God. It is certainly a wonderful time for so many members of our monastic community to be here today. And it certainly is a pleasure to welcome Brother Andrew's parents and his aunt to be here with us as well. With all the cares and the concerns that's caused by this COVID-19 virus, it is truly grateful for you to be here and to ask God to be among us to keep us healthy and safe through these difficult times. In my own name and in the name of the community, I would like to express our gratitude especially to you, Meg and Pete, for your many years of encouragement to your son. Your support throughout his life is a gift not only to him, but also to all of us, because now he becomes a vowed member of our monastic family. In the scriptures, the call to be a disciple is a very distinctive event in the Synoptic Gospels. Jesus walks along the Sea of Galilee, and there he encounters Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, the patron of our brother Andrew. He calls them to become disciples, and immediately they leave everything to follow the Lord. In the gospel we just heard, Peter reminds Jesus that he has left everything, and he wants to know, what will I get out of this? Jesus basically says, there is no comparison. What you will receive greatly outweighs what you have given up. 
The same thing happens to James and his brother John. Jesus calls them, and on the spot they leave everything and their father, Zebedee, and they follow Jesus. In St. John's Gospel, John the Baptist points to Jesus and says, there's the Lamb of God. And two of his disciples, it says, leave John and go and follow Jesus. They ask Jesus where he's staying, and Jesus turns to them and says, come and see. Only then do we learn that Andrew is one of those two disciples. Andrew goes and finds his brother Peter and says, we have found the Messiah. And so those two become the Lord's disciples. And in the Acts of the Apostles, Saul is traveling to Damascus and is thrown to the ground and surrounded by a bright light and hears the voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? With that very dramatic encounter, Saul begins the journey by which he will become known as St. Paul, his disciple. These stories that appear in the scriptures also continue throughout the long history of the Christian community. Even among us who are gathered here in this church, many of us can remember the story that was very special to us and our call into this life as monastery, in this life as members of this monastery. Some of us, the call may have come while we were enrolled in school. For others, the call may have come because of an influence of a particular monk in their life. For myself, the call happened on a Greyhound bus coming out of Birmingham. St. Benedict, whose feast we are celebrating today, goes out of his way to describe this call, what it means to be a disciple according to this monastic way of life. In the prologue to his rule, he says, Dear brothers, what is more delightful than to hear the voice of God calling us to be with him? If you desire life and want to see good days, he says, renounce your own will, come to the monastery, and do battle for Christ, the true King. Brother Andrew, by the grace of God, you have heard that voice of the Lord calling you. And this community of St. Bernard, today especially, welcomes you. For over a year you have lived the life of a monk, and you have now completed your year as a novice. So now you come before the Lord and all the angels and saints, and before this monastic community, and you profess your vows. Vows of stability in the community, conversion to a, in a monastic way of life, and obedience according to the rule of St. Benedict and the proper law of our congregation. As you make these vows, may you continue to truly seek God and remain zealous for obedience, the work of God, and humble service. In this way, you will advance more and more in the life of faith, so that with time, you will indeed run the way of God's commandments, and with your heart filled with the inexpressible, inexpressible delight of divine love. With that now in your heart, I now ask you to come forward and profess your vows.
My Son, by water and the Holy Spirit, you have already been consecrated to God's service. Are you resolved to be more closely united to him by the bond of monastic profession? I am resolved. In your desire to follow Christ more perfectly, are you resolved to observe stability in this community, to strive for daily conversion through a monastic manner of life, and to offer the sacrifice of obedience. I am May Almighty God give you his grace to fulfill your resolutions. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, look upon this servant of yours who is resolved to dedicate his life to you by professing the gospel life as expressed in the rule of our Holy Father Benedict. In your love, grant that his way of life may bring glory to your name and further your plan of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen.
to dedicate his life to you today. In your mercy, grant him the strength to seek you with a pure heart and to serve his brothers for your sake. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you chose to clothe yourself in our mortality. We humbly ask that you bless this habit. Your holy fathers wore this monastic habit as a sign of their humility and renunciation of the world. May he who is about to be invested with this habit be clothed with glory on the last day. For you live and reign, God, forever and ever. Amen. Brother Andrew, put on this clothing as a sign of your consecration. May you keep in your heart that dedication to the Lord, which this habit outwardly proclaims.
receive the rule which you have freely accepted as your law of life. By keeping it faithfully, may you arrive at the perfection of love. In confidence, we now stand and present our petitions before the Lord. For the Holy Church of God, that adorned by the virtues of her children, she may shine ever more brightly for Christ her bridegroom. Let us pray to the Lord. salvation of the world, that all religious may be messengers and servants of the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who follow the evangelical counsel, that the law of love may shine in their lives and that, like the first disciples, they may be one in heart and mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother Andrew, who has today bound himself more closely to God's service, that his heart may be filled with generous love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of God who are unable to join us at the altar of the Lord, for their prayers and intentions, and for a speedy return to the common celebration of the Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families, friends, and benefactors, for their health and safety, and for an increase in faith and peace during the 
this time of isolation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all here present, that we may be faithful to Christ's teaching as he calls us to be prepared, and that we may bear fruit in holiness, grow into the fullness of Christ, and with Blessed Mary, our Virgin, Saint Benedict, Saint Bernard, and all the saints, meet together in the heavenly city. Let us pray to the Lord. Again and again, let us pray to the Lord. God, our Father, on this blessed day, we ask you to hear these, our petitions, and grant all according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For you are the glory of their strength, 
By your favor it is that our might is exalted. It is your face that we seek, O Lord. My mercy and my faithfulness shall be with him. By my name his might shall be exalted. I will keep my faithful love for him always. With him my covenant shall last. It is your face that we see, O But I will never take back my mercy. My fatality will never fail. I will never violate my cover, nor go back on the promise of my name. It is your face that we see, O Lord. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, may the prayer of St. Benedict accompany these gifts, which we offer you in devoted service, sharing now in the sufferings of Christ, May we hereafter be united with him in his glory. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the oblations and prayers we offer you as we celebrate the beginning of religious profession and grant that the first fruits of your servant may be transformed by your grace into a plentiful harvest. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, we praise you for the life and teaching of blessed Benedict, 
preferring nothing to the love of Christ, he consecrated himself and his disciples in the service of the one true King. You chose him as a master in the way of perfection, so that inspired by his work and example, your people might seek you in truth and strive for the rewards you have promised. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as without end we proclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus, Deus and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Bernard and St. Benedict, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each of you. Amen. We now offer each other a sign of his peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, may St. Benedict, who passed to you, strengthened by these mysteries, pray for us. May our lives express the love which urges us on to eternal glory. May these mysteries we have received fill us with joy, O oh Lord, and grant that by your power this your servant may freely fulfill the duties of the religious life he has undertaken and may offer you willing service through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <coughs> Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in. 